Welcome back to the Razorback Nation's exclusive look into Arkansas coach Brett Bielema from the hog farm to head hog. Now, growing up in tiny Prophetstown, Illinois, Bielema didn't have much trouble becoming the big athletic fish in a small pond. But that fish's choice to jump into a giant ocean is what truly defined his football career. My first organized sporting event was uh, the Prophetstown Piranhas. It was a high school, it was a local swim team. Long before starring on the football field, Brett Bielema became well known as an athlete in Prophetstown. I can remember way back in elementary school, me and him were always the first two people picked for gym class. Mm -hmm. And that changed pretty quickly where I wasn't the first pick anymore. And he became, he was always a really athletic kid, big kid, obviously, as a younger guy. Bielema tried his hand at baseball and basketball, but only one other sport captivated him outside of the gridiron. I also enjoyed wrestling quite a bit. I was, I love the individuality of it and being able to compete with somebody on the mat. My last year, I was undefeated until I went to sectional. I think I was like 27 and one. And I lost to the eventual state champion. Hey, at least you lost to the champ. He probably tells everybody, I beat Brett I beat Bielema. Him, yeah. I bump into some of those guys once in a while. A lot more guys I think they beat me than they did. <laughs> Revisionist history. Yeah, selective memory. First coach who really captivated my mind was our wrestling coach, Kai Dagami, who actually ironically lives in Fayetteville now. He was a guy that was was very, very uh, hard on character, on doing things right, on values, teamwork, chemistry. Those are things that carry on beyond just that season in life. And some will pick up on that and others may not, but Brett was one who, that was his personality as well, that was his essence, is that you've got to have some character, standards, values, ethics that you believe in that you're not going to go left or right on, that you're going to follow that. He really had a huge impact on me as a person, huge, 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 huge. Although he enjoyed success in wrestling, Bielema's heart lied in football. Provincetown Profits, we ran through a little, we'd run through that goal post, there'd be the Cheerleaders would make the big sign that you had to break through every game. He bounced around multiple positions before finding his home between the lines. I really enjoyed defense. I, I enjoyed, um, you know, what, what what I didn't know at the time was a lot, of, a lot of times people would lean on me about, Brett, what's coming, what's the play, and I kind of knew things that were going on around me before everybody else did, and, and, and it really helped me play faster than everybody, and um, I guess that's probably the first indication now that I think back about it that, that I, I really enjoyed the X's and O's side of it. What'd you learn on this field that you still think about, you still use? I think uh, obviously the way you play the game, it doesn't take a lot of talent or a lot of ability to play hard and play physical, and I, I definitely was taught how to do that. Bielema earned all conference and all region recognition, but the big schools weren't beating down his door. Well, I had a lot of Division three schools at that time. Um, there was a school, Augustana College in Rock Island, Illinois, that was winning championship after national championship after national championship, and uh, Coach Reed was the head coach there at that time, and I almost really went there. He came and saw me at school, and it was kind of a badge of honor. That was a program that was winning and, and doing a lot of really good things on a Division three level. Drew interest from like some one double A's and lower level Division one and I had gone to summer camp at the University of Iowa for three years in a row and gotten to know those coaches pretty good and that's when a phone call came uh, from Carl Jackson who said that uh, you know we'd love to have the opportunity to have you walk on and, and be a part of the program at Iowa and uh, it didn't take me long to decide that's what I was going to do my dad gave me a, uh, a quote that said uh, it's, it's uh, better to play in excellence than excel in mediocrity I think of Brett Bellema, I think of one of the toughest, hard-charging football players I ever had at the University of Iowa. One ref always said to my dad that I'd be the first guy to knock someone in their ass, but I'd always pick him up. Oh, I kind of liked it. He walked up to me during practice and said, uh, Coach Fry said, I'd like to play for the Iowa Hawkeyes. And I looked at him, I said, uh, what position do you play? He said, I'm a defensive lineman. I said, how much do you weigh? Oh, about 185. I said, son, you're too small to play Big Ten football defense. He got this big look on his face. <laughs> he said, just give me a uniform and I'll show you. <laughs> and I got the manager to give him a uniform, and two weeks later I gave him a scholarship. We had an early season conditioning test, and I had basically outperformed everybody in my position group and kind of stood out right away and had some people, you know, give me one of those, hey, who's this guy? Because uh, nobody knew anything about me. I was, I was that bulimic kid, bulimic, bulimia. Uh, I was every eating disorder known to man. Uh, uh, and, and, then when we started practicing, I remember I just 
probably went a little bit harder, went a little bit longer. The first couple of scrimmages we had, he was just outstanding. He he had what I call, he had a motor and is going full speed all the time. We had an offensive lineman by the name of Bob Crash who ended up being a first round pick. And every day after practice, he would come and grab me and ask me to work extra, like a half an hour extra. Um, and he wouldn't ask anybody else. And he, he was probably the best player on our team and he was grabbing me to work pass rush against him. Not because I was great, I think just because I went harder than everybody else. Brett was inspirational. He, he helped our offensive players become a lot better because he'd beat them in practice after everybody else had gone in to take a shower. It was a badge of honor, uh, no doubt. Um, I definitely remember, you know, like in the locker room afterwards, everybody's like, what do you do? What do you want you for? You know, and I'm like, oh, he just wanted me to go pass rush against him. And, and uh, that kind of made a statement to me. And then as coaches began to, that didn't know my name, all of a sudden started coming up and talking to me and uh, speaking to me about what I could do, I think that made a huge statement to me. The one-time walk-on became a stalwart on the Hawkeye defense. Before his senior season, the team voted Bielema one of two captains. I think that says an awful lot about what kind of person he is because he wasn't a defensive captain because he was a stellar athlete. He was a defensive captain because of how hard he worked and how he practiced and what he did every day and how he treated his teammates. I remember talking to his teammates at Iowa and they just said how much they loved playing with him. I always knew I wanted to be the guy that played the hardest. That was no doubt there. That doesn't take effort. That doesn't take skill. That just takes want to. And I would imagine that's something you try and teach your players Big time. today. Big time. In Brett's mind, Brett Billima thinks that he's the best. And that's where it all starts. It's a mental approach. And when you have that type of attitude, then you work your tail off to make it happen. I've heard it said about him before that whatever it is, he has it. And I actually believe that. He's, he's got an aura about him. He's got a persona about him that uh, uh, people seem to draw themselves to. A magnetic personality showing early signs of a potential coaching career. And that's exactly where we're headed next in the Head Hog Special. He always had an idea, and most of them were real good. But when you're that young, you know, you, you have to have experience. Shortly after his collegiate career ended, Brett Bielema became one of the youngest assistant coaches in Division I football. Stick around.